don't want to come outside. You understand that? SWAT team members flooded a parking lot near a Hickson credit union shortly after 6.30. They were told five people had been taken hostage, and it was their job to get them out alive. Got a white male inside. Uh, was The scenario set up where he was going in as he was trying to do a bank robbery. Uh, the bank robbery was basically foiled in the process, so he went ahead and went barricade inside and had some hostages with him. Uh, he's got a mustache and... Okay, well, then tell me. Do the thing, man. Do the thing, Tom. Go, go check the, go check the room. Wendy, just go do your thing. Just go check it and get back here. I don't. And want some water. You never know when your employees or, or any business, and especially financial institutions, are going to be put in this kind of a position. I want it now, man. Come on, talk to me. Sergeant Kevin Kinser says this type of hands-on training is essential when it comes down to a do-or-die situation. We hope these things never happen, but we have to train for them to happen. One side facing that way, one side facing, one facing Austin. Austin. Kinser so. says SWAT team members undergo frequent, extensive training, but he says this kind of legitimate setting with the actors involved is extremely rare. Our goal is for a successful resolution to every situation. Everybody comes out, nobody's harmed, nobody gets injured. Kinser says under real-life circumstances, the stress and fatigue of the job can be almost overwhelming. And these practice sessions bring the team one step closer to bringing everyone out safely. You're basically waiting for things to go terribly, terribly wrong and hoping and praying that they don't.